Today I'm going to be going over this painting that a friend requested me to do. It's about a boy and his dog. Well, the, the boy's all grown up. They're in this field of cherry blossoms. Here you can see that I have masked it out in Unreal just to get the scene. I thought it would help me paint a little bit faster, so I took a high resolution screenshot and then added a filter to remove some of the texture and then just started painting it. Right now I am painting the face, just drawing over it because the character that I just threw in there as a placeholder, I wasn't very satisfied with the face, so I just started redrawing it. In the end of the day, I'm not sure how much time it saved using Unreal to mass out this scene because I ended up just repainting the entire scene. So after more massing out, I started working on the background. And you can see here I'm just massing in the colors of the trees. Here I'm using a mask that was generated in Unreal to mask out all the leaves and the branches so that I could easily paint them. But in the end of the day, the branches were a little bit noisy, so I ended up just painting over the whole thing. The, the masks were not useful near the end. I just manually painted everything. Here you could even see that I'm painting over the, the branches. It was another type of selection that I was using that was generated in Unreal. So the cool part about using 3D to help with your painting is that you have selection layers to help you mask things out. Sometimes it can be a little bit restricting because you're relying on it too much and it could make your painting look a little bit stiff. So eventually I just stopped using it and just painted over everything. Now here I'm massing out some of the, uh, the butterfly elements that I had later in the painting. I put one on top of the dog because I thought it was fun. And I also wanted to illuminate the dog's face a little bit. Here I'm massing out some of the grass. I ended up painting over all the grass. The grass that was in 3D in Unreal was a little bit too noisy for what I wanted. Um, the values weren't correct as well. I wanted the grass to be a little bit cooler in terms of color. And I think in Unreal, I used a sunset setting. So it came off a little bit warmer than I thought it would. I wanted the grass to be cool and then the highlights on the grass to be warm, a warm shade of green. Same thing with the trees. I spent a lot of time just painting the tree and the tree trunks, and then I would end up not being very satisfied with it. And as you could see, I just erased it. Here, I'm still using the masks a little bit. I would go into Sketchfab. Sketchfab is actually a really great resource to uh, gather reference. You could change the lighting around in terms of the assets you find there. It's great if you have some clothing, find a type of clothing in Sketchfab that matches your character and change it to the right perspective and change the lighting around a little bit and use that as reference. It saves a lot of time. It makes your painting a little bit more accurate, increases the fidelity, and it'll just make your painting look better in the end. I'm just trying to refine more of the, the clothing, adding in some detail, some cool and warm colors to contrast each other, some highlights, and adding some texture. Even when I'm doing these selections, I'm trying to have interesting shapes. They're not just random selection shapes. 
inside each lassoing selection, they have their own type of design. So in the macro level, hopefully there is good design. And then even the micro level of these shadow shapes, I choose good design as well. And here I'm just doing the same thing for the pants. I jump around a lot, so I might jump around on the pants or jump around on the face. And right now I realize that the face needs a little bit more attention. So I'm doing the same thing. Use a lasso tool to just create an interesting shape and then a soft gradient brush to just do a, a gradient over that shape. This is just a technique that I've learned. The next pass I would want it to have a more painted look is maybe use a smudge tool and smudge over the, the hard edges to get some contrast of hard edge and soft edges. The painting is going a little bit fast. It's at 10 times the speed. I don't normally paint this fast. It'd be great if I could paint this fast, but in total, I would say the painting took maybe 15, 20 hours. Now here I'm using the butterfly as a little bit of a light source to get some of the lighting in there. It's always important to find good light sources to illuminate your painting. It's very easy to make your painting look flat. Sometimes you can make up light sources that are casted from off screen to help illuminate your character. So that way it could help stand out from the background. But in this case, I had these butterflies that were glowing to help illuminate part of the character's face. I usually take a decent amount of time to paint a face just because there's a lot of things that could look wrong with it. If the perspective is off, if it's not following the perspective of the rest of the painting, there's a lot of subtle gradients in the face that is easy to pick up if it's not there. It takes a lot of like practicing and studies to get good at it. I still could improve on it a lot more. There's a lot of highlights on the edge of your nose or like the top of your lip that can be missed if you're not paying attention. So it's always good to use reference. Even the way that skin is shaded is important to try and figure out. Right now it's starting to look a little bit better. In terms of the face, I'm a little bit more satisfied. Painting over some of the, the tech lines that I masked out in the beginning of the painting, just because it's easy to just paint over it. Just like how I jumped around before, I am now jumping to the dog. You can see on the top right of the reference I use, I use a program called PureRef. It's great. I think it's five bucks, but it is essentially just an app on your computer that you can throw a reference on top and you could move it around. I have a really, really large PureRef file that I just throw all my reference in there just so that I can use it whenever I need. I have anatomy references, I have cool poses like inspiration reference. I find it a lot more useful than having a bunch of tabs open on Google. You could just go into Pinterest or wherever you find reference, pull up the images and just throw it on PureRef. 
I highly recommend using PureRef. It's, it's a great tool. So similar to before, I'm just trying to create interesting shapes with the lasso tool that also follow the, the shape of a dog as well. The shadow shapes, they're not just random, they're hopefully purposeful. They have interesting contrast between small and large shapes. And it's great that the butterfly is blue because the dog is a warm color because the dog has a lot of red and yellow in it and it contrasts nicely with the butterfly which is blue. It's also nice to use that kind of color contrast. Dog skin, I would say, or dog fur is pretty tricky to paint. If you don't do it a lot, I would highly recommend using reference to really get the look of dog fur because the sheen on it, the way it behaves with light is very interesting. Now here, I jumped around a little bit, but I decided to lighten the background a lot because I wanted the contrast with the character and the background to be more intense. I don't think it was the greatest idea, so eventually, later down the line, I'm going to undo that edit. Because the amount that I lightened it would drastically have affected the lighting of the character, and I think it ended up not looking the way I wanted to. Now I'm starting to mass out the trees, trying to create a contrast of light and dark shapes on the trees. This will end up being wasted time. I end up not going this route. I don't paint trees a lot. They are a little bit tricky. And this was a good learning experience on how not to paint a tree. Even now, I still wonder what is the best way to paint a tree because to paint a tree the way I would like it is a little bit tricky and I still need to figure out how to do it better. So all this work right here, it'll all be going in the trash really soon in the next part of the video. You can see how the trees are dark now. I skipped ahead a little bit. I ended up not keeping it that light. I undid it and then I just kept it dark and then I painted it over the same value as it was before. And now I jumped into working on the tree trunks. The tree trunks, I wanted to keep the color a little bit cooler compared to the, the leaves, which is a little bit warmer. Now I'm trying to add a little bit of parallax with the leaves of the trees in the front with the branches. Adding the branches helps to add scale to the trees. Now I'm trying to create more volume in the branches.
Here was my attempt on making cherry blossom branches. I ended up using a similar technique, but it ended up being very different in the end. I actually painted out each individual flower a little bit more accurately, and then I duplicated it similar to how I'm doing it now, except I would also paint over the flowers so that they weren't as contrasting because with each individual flower just duplicated without changing the values of them, uh, they could be very jarring. So it's very important to wash over it with the color just to tone down the contrast. It's also a good opportunity to add texture into the painting with these leaves. So I'm just duplicating large areas of the leaves into different parts and then I would change the values and change the levels so that as it recedes further back it's a little bit darker but when it's closer to the front it's a little bit brighter just add a little bit more contrast. I'm just duplicating it uh, I'm not worrying about duplicating it over the character since in, later on I'm just going to delete it. So I was done the pass of the leaves and now I'm just working on the sword. Once again, using reference, uh, especially for swords, I would highly recommend using Sketchfab. A lot of people like to model swords. It's a great way to just get reference. So just adding some extra detail on the hand, adding some highlights, adding the construction of how the sword is made. Uh, I add that green for the bounce light of the grass. In the end, I wanted more bounce light from the grass to be illuminated on the character, but I didn't make it as intense as I wanted to, but I think it ended up being okay at the end. It's nice to have that green bounce light on this character because the green is sort of a warmer color in comparison to everything else and the character overall is cooler. Also the green is more saturated of a green and the character's coat is desaturated and it's a nice contrast to see. And similar to my other character, there was like a ribbon in the end. I really liked how the ribbon turned out since it contrasted the grass pretty well. And now I'm just painting in some of the flowers that was growing in grass. Once again, I used reference. However, I wanted to keep these flowers in a cooler color. So I tried to use a cool red instead of using a warmer red since these were the ones in shadow. In this painting, I definitely tried to utilize cool and warm colors a lot more. You could see that the flower I'm painting, or I just edited two seconds ago, was a warmer red versus the ones before were a cooler red. Here you could see the reference I used for the hair. 
I found the image on Pinterest, I think. The hair looks cool, so I wanted to just get a little bit of that feeling into the character. Using lasso tool to paint hair strands is always... It's enjoyable. It's a little bit tedious, but you can get really sharp lines doing that. And once again, designing each shape to be interesting and not just arbitrary. Having good light sources to create interesting highlights always helps make the painting stand out. Try to always think about where the lighting is coming from when you're painting to help keep your character or keep the, the subject lit properly. I'm always trying to keep as much as I can like light next to dark values or cool next to warm values. So in this example, the butterfly is pretty the value of the butterfly is very light, so I am keeping it next to the dog, which has a darker fur, so it makes the butterfly pop out a little bit more. I had some references of like different butterfly shapes or butterflies in different poses. So I just created those and duplicated it around. Now I am reworking some of the leaves. You can see that I toggled on and off earlier. It's pretty different from the original painting that I had or the original render that I had. The original render was very warm. The colors were a little bit muddy and now the colors are a little bit more solid. They are either cool or they're warm. They contrast with each other nicely versus before everything was sort of washed with this like brown sepia color, which I wasn't very satisfied with. I would say the benefit would be that it helped set the camera in a nice position where I could start painting, but doing it in 3D in the beginning might have taken a little bit longer than I wanted to for it to really pay off. Just adding some details on the bark just to create areas of interest even in a background. The background doesn't need to be too detailed since it can be distracting if there's too much areas of interest, but it's good to just make it a little bit cohesive with the foreground. So I'm trying to design like an interesting tree shape that doesn't look weird the best I can. So it'll be a lot of just painting trees. I ended up redoing the leaves later on. The trees I will end up duplicating and then this is the final painting with some bloom and post effects that I painted on. If you have any questions about this tutorial feel free to comment below. Also you can subscribe to my Patreon to get new tutorials first or new videos, new art stuff. It's at patreon slash chinfong art. It will be written in the about section below as well. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.